with Jesus Joy. Rise up to your feet and celebrate grace as we welcome God's servant. Let's celebrate grace tonight. Generation. Celebrate grace. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Please, whilst, whilst still standing, I'd like us to honor the angel over this house, Apostle Goodheart and his dear wife. I love you, sir. I truly do. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. It remains an honor for me to be a blessing to the body even through this platform and I do not take it for granted. I honor every servant of God, every man, every woman, Pastor Opie and your dear husband. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we trust you and that is why we are here. We believe in your power to walk wonders in the midst of your people. We have come trusting. We have come believing. We have come to learn. We have come to be transformed. We have come to obtain testimonies that validate once again that in spite of all that has happened and is happening in our world, you still remain Lord of all. And so I pray, O oh God, tonight that there will be the hearing of faith and even the workings of miracles. Move in our midst. Glorify Jesus. Let our hearts be so edified in the name of Jesus. Bless our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Be seated. Again, it's an honor to be here. Um, I, I really sense that the Lord would have us pray a bit tonight. I know that this is an apostolic ministry. And um, prayer is powerful. Praise the Lord. I also believe that somewhere in the course of this service this short session that i have that the lord will stretch his mighty hand to heal to deliver to transform in the name of jesus christ praise the name of the lord so i'll just lay a foundation to start off my um the sessions and um i believe that it's been a wonderful time romans chapter 15 and verse 19 If you want to title my teaching tonight, you can call it Instruments of Deliverance, part one. Romans 15 and verse 19. If it's possible and you can see it, let's read together in concert. Ready? One to read. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Lyconium. Did I pronounce that well? If I didn't, just mention whatever you see. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. That means that the gospel cannot be said to be fully preached until there is a dimension of it that captures and reveals signs and wonders. Paul is speaking and it's like a checklist. And he's saying on the strength of this and that and that, I can stand with confidence to say I have fully preached the gospel. Please keep that scripture there. It then means it is possible for the gospel to be preached, but not fully preached. And I think that we live in a time where there is an increased need to capture other dimensions of the gospel that sadly are gradually fading. Our fathers handed to us a very complete gospel, a gospel that captured the whole counsel of God. Are we together? And now through the years and through 
the vicissitudes of life, we began to edit the gospel and remove certain dimensions of the gospel that make it powerful and make it worth hearing. And one of it is the miraculous and the supernatural. For some reason, we found a way to reduce the gospel from the realm of supernatural power to the realm that only relates to the intellect. And now don't get me wrong, there is a dimension of the gospel that relates to the intellect because a true gospel must transform society and we must draw values from the gospel. The gospel is both a message and an ideology. There are two dimensions to the gospel. The gospel is first a message that saves. Then it is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purposes across every strata of human activities. So these dimensions must be captured in our idea of what the Bible calls the gospel. But in a bid to preach and advance the frontier of I would call it an attack on the body of Christ. Gradually, gradually, certain dimensions of the gospel began to fade. Are we together now? Yes. And there is an explanation for that. But then it looked like we started experiencing what Gideon experienced. Because when the angel of the Lord came to Gideon, his contemplation and his discussion was, where are the signs? I know one time you said God moved and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not part of this now. You don't come and tell me something that I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced. Where are the signs? Listen, if these dimensions of the gospel are not restored, then it takes only one generation of neglect. And many people will not be able to define God by all the attributes that truly make him God again. A time will come when God will become a philosophy, no longer a reality. Then we will reduce him and edit him based on the templates of our experiences. Through signs and wonders, he said, from Jerusalem, I have fully preached the gospel. I came from a background where I didn't have the opportunity to see the miracle working power of God. Very well intentioned, sincere evangelical background, full of people with character, morality, but I knew something was missing in our understanding of God. The sick went back sick. The oppressed went back oppressed. I used to sing hymns those days that said so many things we could not prove and the service would finish and people would go back as though we were playing, as though we were acting, as though we were lying. They would sing songs about the might of God, sing songs about his miracles, how he parted the Red Sea, we would admonish ourselves with psalms, hymns and spiritual songs and it will end only in theory. Then the preacher would come, most well-intentioned personality, and you could see a desire. If only I had the grace to reveal the wonder-working power of God, you would even see people cry. And the painful part of that service is when we have to share the grace without transformation, without an evidence. People would walk through that door, hoping that God were not a scam. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. So you will do what you do. Here's the word now. We need a move. We need a move. The first time I would watch a preacher capture a dimension of God my heart so desired.
some, you, you see, the thing about God is that he designed man to need the fullness of him. No matter what dimension of God you have experienced, while you get satisfied by being filled with one dimension, that same encounter leaves you hungry for the other part of God. It was a system designed by his intelligence to make sure man never gets exhausted seeking him. So when you come to him, his first assignment is to fill the current hunger. Then his, it, it causes you to, to want another dimension again. That realm is called eternity. He put it in man. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we have seen the God who saves. We have seen the God who is kind. But very few people have seen the dimension of God that we call the God of wonders. Hallelujah. Jesus in Luke chapter 11. Let me just introduce my discourse for tonight. Jesus in Luke chapter 11, please. You give us from verse 1. Please be patient with the reading. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of the disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Now, the disciples had walked with Jesus for a while and they noticed the dimension of wonder and power. He, he seemed invincible. It was as though there was nothing that was not within his reach as far as the purposes of the Father was concerned. Remember this scripture. Please give it back to us. This was not talking about prayerlessness. They were already praying. This was talking about prayer that did not produce results. The disciples were frustrated. There was something about their prayer life. It wasn't producing results. They were tired of going to the synagogue and hear the, the, the Pentateuch or the Psalms, you know. They would read it and chant it and say a lot of things. Remember that one of the members in that parish was a woman who had been bound for 18 years. Are we still Bible students? I can imagine what was in the mind of that woman. Every time they read about the God who parted the Red Sea, etc. The woman would sit there and say, God, where are you? Is there anything too hard? Ah, then comes Jesus. Now I love Jesus. He does not just say, he does. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, for he had anointed me. The Bible says it was given to him, the scroll of Esaias. And when he took it, he began to read the messianic prophecy. And then he said, this day, not tomorrow, let this be a prophecy for someone. It will be this day. No delay again. This day, in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears and he saw a man with a withered hand no explanation no excuses mr man stretch your hands the gospel that captures power that captures dimensions of the supernatural back to luke chapter 11 so the disciples came to him verse 1 and they said teach us to pray that means reveal to us a formula that is hidden in your prayer life that has results to show for it. Something about the barrenness in our prayer is frustrating our experience. Can you teach us? And notice, Jesus didn't say, oh dear, I, I think you're just being humble. He knew something was wrong with their prayer lives. Next verse, please. Verse 2. And he said unto them, when ye pray, Something is wrong. I love Jesus. Now he's helping them. This is deliverance happening. And the first assignment is to reconstruct their understanding. He says, when you pray, say, our father. That is the first revelation of prayer. Now I'm not really teaching on prayer. There's, there's somewhere we're going, but just as an introduction. He says, when you pray, 
come to God with a consciousness that he is Abba. The word Abba means he is source, he is sustainer and defender. That means something about your not understanding God is affecting the results that you get from him. He says when you come to God, you must come with this consciousness that he is Abba. And the principal quality of fathers is that they give. If you being evil, he said, know how to give. Not just how to lead. Not just how to talk. A true father is a giver. Automatically, that takes away the doubt and fear. Will God do it? Will God heal? Will his outstretched hand come? We are talking of Abba. Father. So he says, when you pray, come with this consciousness. Number one, our father. Number two, your interaction with God will require faith because he is in a realm that is not earthly, which art in heaven. So it informs you immediately that this interaction is between two realms. That even though you are on earth and he's in heaven, there is still a technology that can sponsor communication. That means faith. You must come in faith, which art in heaven. Number three, that you come with the spirit of reverence. Hallowed be your name. That the consciousness of the benevolence of the Father should not lead to carelessness. That you must come with a sense of reverence. Next verse, please. Keep it for us there. It says, thy kingdom come. That means that your desire and your prayer, more than your needs being met, should be his kingdom coming. That means that the root cause of your prayer request in the first place is because his kingdom is not there. That if you focus on his kingdom coming, you may not even need to pray other prayers again. Your kingdom come. How? It tells you how the kingdom comes on earth. By your will being done. That everywhere his will is done, his kingdom comes. And that it should come in earth. Notice it never said on earth. In earth. And the first earth is you. So your kingdom come and your will be done in my life. As this portion and piece of earth. This is my. We're getting close to my verse of emphasis now. Number three. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Wow. He would have said give us this day food. But he's saying, according to the law of my benevolence, there is an allocation that is daily. I'm speaking to someone here, not monthly, not weekly, not yearly. You can, he says, give us our daily bread, not our bread. That means every 24 hour, it recycles in the spirit. God is able and willing to supply for the day. Give us day by day or this day our daily bread verse 4 it says and forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone that is indebted to us very powerful this is a revelation of mercy that whilst you obtain mercy from God you must know that you are dealing with the realm of men and that means your heart must be positioned to communicate out of the abundance of that which you have received here is my discourse tonight and lead us not into temptation this is a call for discernment that we are living in an environment where not everything is exactly as it looks therefore we will need discernment it's an advocacy lead us not into temptation there is something about your leadership but there are times when the evil will not come because of your carelessness there are times when the evil will come because of the territory where you reside. It says when you find yourself in that situation, it's no longer an issue of your carelessness. That when you get to that time, the prayer is deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. You have a personal responsibility to walk with the spirit of God, discerning what to do, where to go. But there are times that the things that happen to you are things that are common to men. It says at such time, deliver us from evil. Please look up. According to scripture, the wonders of God among many functions 
the principal reason for the wonder of God is is a demonstration of his love, his might, his providence, and as a system of judgment, are we together now? Over the kingdom of darkness is always an advocacy of the exodus of his people to the place of destiny. The principal instrument of deliverance in scripture is the wonder walking power of God. So when the God of wonders wants to show up, there has to be an occasion where the threat, the pride, and, and, and the challenge of darkness is buffeting his people. He does not just come as savior. He comes with the God of wonders. Signs that dumbfound the minds of all and sundry. It's, it's like a signature. It's like God stretching himself again and saying, I'm still the monarch of the universe. Very, very powerful. Deuteronomy chapter 26 and verse 8, please. Shilaka subrakatuziada. Deuteronomy 26 and verse 8. And the Lord brought us forth from out of Egypt. Egypt is a land of wizardry, a land of slavery and captivity. He brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. Psalm 66 verse 3 says, Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power, not just desire. People of God, it takes more than desire to experience the fullness of God in the wicked world that we live in. It said, through the greatness of your power, shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. An instrument of deliverance. Psalm 30 from verse 11, please. Just looking at a few scriptures. Psalm 30 verse 11. It says, thou hast turned for me. I receive it for myself. Thou hast turned for me. My mourning into dancing. It says, thou hast put up my sackcloth. And girded me with gladness. Verse 12. It says, to the end that my glory may sing praise unto thee. And not be silent. Oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you. You have turned my morning to dancing. Something about your hand. Is it not in your Bible that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, he said he did it in a spectacular way. It was like a dream. The recipients of that miracle could not even comprehend the dynamics of their own deliverance. He says, turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. Deliver us from evil. There is something about man. John chapter 4 and verse 48. There is something about the fallen man. That because of the nature of men outside of the influence of the spirit. They would require a spectacular display. A dimension of power a dimension of the might of god that generally the bible says where the carcasses are it says there the eagles will gather there's something about men and things that are usual they don't seem it looks like the lifespan of honor for men does not is is very short the moment they see a thing and they can discern the dynamics around it when they conquer it they no longer value it this is this is a weakness in men so when men see something that is spectacular their next assignment is through the instrument of science or divination to unravel the mystery behind that process if they successfully unravel the mystery behind that process they will no longer be afraid of it the dynamism of god's wonders is such that no man can articulate the extent the dynamics you cannot decipher the dynamics how God will come he will choose a method only 
left to his intelligence. So you expect him to part the Red Sea and he says you walk on water. He has, he has, he has a variety of ways and the goal is to force the pride of man to admit the fact that there is a God in heaven. You would read through scripture that almost there are few miracles that repeated themselves in the Bible. It's a technology to keep men humble. Because men dishonor what they are used to. It's a weakness in men. Please follow me carefully. There is a principal weakness in men. When they are used to people. When they are used to processes. When they are used to things. The more familiar they become with people, with places, with things, their honor also drops. And so God invented a strategy to keep men in awe of him. And the name given to that strategy is the signs and wonders, manifestations of his power. So sometimes you expect him to show up for you through an uncle that based on your parameter, you have calculated it, you have gauged the extent of benevolence. And if only you were assisted a little and God would say, not so. If I do it that way, you will be confused whether it was just his will or it was my contribution. I will use someone. Did I not say strangers will feed your flock? Let me tell you this. You know it is God when it is marvelous. He said if it, if it is the Lord's doing, the way we celebrate God on receiving our testimonies almost showed that he you can almost say he did not have a hand in it the, the way it happens so casual you read your Bible there is nothing casual about God if it is God and he shows up he must leave a signature that will leave you in tears there are times that is your knees that will give the testimony not your mouth you, you, you go down on your knees and you wonder an instrument of deliverance because you see Pharaoh Pharaoh is not a child Pharaoh is not even a pure man Pharaoh is a wizard Pharaoh had been mentored through the art of wizardry and so when Moses came to him and said Pharaoh thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews let my people go I can imagine Ramesses is half brother saying Pharaoh I mean Moses why why have you come to embarrass yourself you would have spent your remaining days in the wilderness. Now you have come to test Egypt. And he said, well, I'm not going to talk so much. He threw his rod. His rod became a serpent. And Pharaoh laughed. He said, this is all you've got? This is Egypt, Moses. This is not the wilderness. Janus, Jambes, bring your rod. Let this man know we have unraveled the realm of the spirit that far. I can imagine God watching. Say, keep, ah. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. There is still more in God. All you've seen is not all he has. God has mysterious arsenals of deliverance. And I'm telling you, you don't dare him to release them. Because there is something God can do that both you and the enemy will keep. There will no longer be war. Both of you will stand in awe. And say, now who is this one? The king of the universe. Honestly speaking, there are not many people who have seen the wonder working power of God. We have seen principles work. But we have not seen the wonder working power of God. You see, principles lead to predictable outcomes. It's still a dimension of God's power that sponsors them. But the wonder working power of God, uh uh. There were miracles that were performed on people, and Jesus begged them and said, Please don't talk. They were too grateful to keep quiet. And I believe in the name of Jesus standing in faith with the apostle over this house. That someone listening in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you by the grace and by the mercy of God. That between now and even tomorrow morning, in the name that is above all names, you will not only receive wonders, you will return a wonder yourself. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 20. 
the wonder of God as an instrument of deliverance. Pharaoh does not let people go because they want to go. There is, there is a dimension of the outstretched arm of God that compels darkness to release you. Listen to me. Now, by the grace of God, I know that we love the Lord, but I think there is something that has been a burden for me, sir. Many believers do not know how determined Satan is. Now, the Bible does not tell us to study Satan, but it tells us to study his strategies. I can tell you one, one of the traits of Satan is his doggedness and his resilience. Just because God said to let you go, just because God said for the door of your destiny to be open, don't you think Satan left Jesus for a while? He reinvented himself and came back through Peter. Reinvented himself and came back through Judas. Satan is that determined. So the idea and the narrative that just because you have access to the tools of redemption, the name, the blood, etc. automatically means your destiny will open up. That kind of thinking itself is an attack. Are we together now? Yes, sir. There is an engaging through understanding. There is a dimension where you will have to call on the power of God to be made manifest for that chain, for that door that would not let you go, to let you go. I know one thing about the realm of the spirit. It only answers to power. It only answers to a dimension of the supernatural. There is no ministry that will grow just by sincere desire. It will take the outstretched arm of God, warding off the gates of hell. It will take the power of God for a business to grow. It will take the power of God for your influence to rise and to be sustained. This I know. Many believers presume that just because they are well intentioned and they are sincere. It means that the devil would not attack them. No. I came to plant an aggression in you because we are going to pray. This is just an introduction. There are, things that, there are things that you must shake tonight and say enough is enough. You see, let me tell you, it is within your power to be angry and to be determined, a holy anger to say in the name of Jesus, this door must open. In the name of Jesus, I press forward. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 20. I will stretch out my hand and I will smite Egypt with all my wonders. Not some. This is what it takes for Egypt to let you go. Not some. Egypt is that stubborn. Please believe what I teach you. Egypt is that stubborn. It will take the full weight of God's arsenals. All my wonders. Please give us that scripture. Which I will do in the midst thereof. After that Joshua Selman. Finally he will let you go. After that old oh, businessman. That means there is a quality in Satan God is revealing. That he can be tired. He can be weary. To the degree to which you resist the devil. There is an assurance that he will flee so if it does not flee it means the resistance is not strong and determined enough i will visit you with my wonders and afterwards he will let you go tonight is just an introduction we are going to pray i truly came with a burden in my heart sharing the burden of your man of God to see that we not just come up with intelligent exegesis of scripture and then return back with our lives with no results. No, no. It is the reason why society continues to look at the church as a nuisance to civilization. There is a dimension of the power of God they are yet to see. 
that will cause our world to once again sing the songs of Miriam. I will sing unto the Lord, she said, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and even the riders. There are ministries, there are lives, there are destinies that have been tied down. I came tonight with a clarion call. Enough is enough. Except you are still interested. Uh -uh. Enough is enough. There is, there, is, there is a determination from the heart of the Father that there is a dimension of God that must be captured in your life. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. There are many of our loved ones who served idols for years. Those idols have produced results that they will not easily let go. Now, I'm, I'm not here to just talk about superstition, but let's be sincere with ourselves. This idol saved them from war. This idol saved them from trouble. Now you come with a message, a very intelligent message, and say, why don't you throw away everything? They tried it for one year. They were poor. They were broke. They suffered. They said, no way. While you are trying to unravel what you are proposing to me, let me remain loyal to what has worked for me. Men do not live what works. This is why there is a mix of tradition and Christianity and it still remains in spite of our education and we have the effrontery to tell people to leave sorcery and leave all of this and then we present a gospel that is not complete. Helas kabrando gasubra haskidiata. We have the gods to tell people stop taking drugs and they die because of what we administered and we told them the lord sent us to them so you imagine their definition of such a god and such a king then we sing that since i was young and now i am old we say i have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread and something in you says are you not lying listen we must trust God to capture the fullness of his dimensions. Otherwise, our children will ask us questions we will not be able to answer. This is not a generation of blind loyalty. There must be proof and a basis for their allegiance. The fathers that handed down the gospel to us, some of them walked in spectacular dimensions. Their campgrounds today remain a memorial that God came to our soil. They interacted with angels, not these arbitrary visions that have no proof. Some of them, it was their encounter that birthed certain dimensions of power. When we read through scripture, did a viper not bite the apostle? And he did not, he shook it off. Pela paruskiada. Oh Lord, you are my God, he says. Early will I seek you. He says, my heart longs for you to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Time will fail me, he says, to talk of men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness. We are too scientific and too sociological and too intellectual for impact. There has to be a dimension imported that is higher than this realm. I tell you, we can save a nation in one day if we allow the power of God to be outstretched. It is difficult because we are not yielded enough. Joshua stands to command the son to, ah, my goodness. Do you not read your Bible? Did you stop reading it? Watch the wonder working power. These were not parables. These were men who walked upon the earth. The Bible says whom the earth was not worthy of. The apostle was teaching. I don't know the content of such a lecture that someone fell and died outside and he took an excuse quickly, went and raised her back, took her up and the lecture continued. When an angel appeared to Mary, her surprise was not the angel. It was a frequent occurrence. It was the salutation that surprised her. 
when the apostles were praying for those who were bound when they were praying and, and Peter was released, the Bible says when he opened the door, when they saw him, they closed it back because they thought it was his angel. Wow. How about the raven that came to feed the prophet at Brook Cherith? That was not a parable. Real manna came from heaven. This is why you came to church tonight. Your business is too scientific to glorify Jesus. It's too calculated. We can predict everything. We know what will happen tomorrow. Show me the dimension that has made a customer come. Not just to buy things to say, I have discerned that there is something about the workings of God in your life. I believe in principles. I believe in doctrine. But I truly believe in signs and wonders. I know you were careless over the rent issue, but now you are in trouble. Is there no way out? If I were God and I called you a child, I will discipline you, but I will not leave you to reproach for my name's sake. So where is that dimension? Why do we look so helpless? And yet we talk about a God who is so benevolent. It looks so difficult to see his hand come. People speak to us, they make a mockery of our God and they go and sleep sound and they wake up sound and they say, I said it. I said it that your advocacy on stage is just acting. My goodness, did you not read of Ananias and Sapphira? The Bible talked about men who lied against the Holy Ghost right there and then in the New Testament. There was a spirit of reverence that came upon the people. We need to trust God to bring back his wonder working power so that one day we will not be preaching and someone will walk on stage and say I am an intellectual and I do not believe your God in the days of the generals one time when I think it was Maria Woodward Eater she was teaching and then some lousy guys were there just talking and saying all kinds of things and the well not the Bible history says how that she just looked at them and said, God judge you. And the tongue of one protruded. Prayer warriors prayed, prayed, prayed. And nothing happened. And so they created a system of apology and they coordinated themselves with a few people. And they came and said, no, we are really sorry. We recognize that you are sent of God. She merely slapped the tongue and it went back. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. There are dimensions of the power of God. That must be displayed in our territory it will no longer become an issue of religion it will become the issue of the maker and his creation that all and sundry people will run to church and say we are coming to encounter the god of heaven our evangelism is hard we beg people we pray and we plead we say accept jesus now and then the people say well in the book of matthew chapter what and and baseless arguments begin there In history, there were men and women who did not talk. They only walked around cities. As they walked around, they deposited a dimension of God. And as they left shops, malls, people began, fire was burning everywhere. This is called the Revival House of Glory. Lebre godu zasiatakata. Let our praying in tongues produce results. In the name of Jesus, may we not become like the disciples. There is, I don't think there is any time in history we are a people of prayer. But many believers are beginning to be frustrated because it seems like our word study. We are doing our best. I hope you are not offended. I came to stretch you a bit. We are going to pray. There is nothing more convincing than the power of a personal testimony. I have, I have experienced him myself. Ah, he says the things we have seen, the things we have heard, the things even of the word of life that we have handled, that is what we teach. Hallelujah. Yes. 
a time came in my life I was tired of preaching I was tired of communicating without results I love the Lord I still do I will all the days of my life but in all fairness I had the opportunity to pray for a few people on wheelchairs I had the opportunity to pray for a few cancer patients a few HIV patients and nothing happened you see, not many people will be sincere with you. Nothing happened. I call upon Jesus. I said, I'm not one of the sons of Skiva. At least I'm sure that I love Jesus. I'm born again. What in the world is this? I would go to preach and return back and demons will oppress me. Sincerely. I knew that something was wrong. of wonders is a warrior that arises because of his jealousy he does not arise until there is a reason to doubt his might when when a generation begins to forget him because it looks like there are many alternatives that look like him it's his jealousy that compels him to arise and he does something in a manner and a fashion that reminds people again look at Egypt look at Babylon Nebuchadnezzar built a statue 90 feet and that at the sound of all kinds of things they would bow. And God said, no, this is too much. Every once in a while men try to believe that they are God. I don't mean one with God. God. So the, the question comes again, Psalm 24. Who really owns the earth? Who really owns territories? And there will have to be a statement in the earth that the earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. Four things there. Number one, the earth. Number two, the resources. Number three, the mind control systems. Number four, the inhabitants. They all belong to him. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 6, please, and verse 27. I really sense a strong anointing in this place now. He delivereth and rescueth. And he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. And by that formula, he had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. The formula he used to rescue Daniel was not a suggestion. It was not a discussion. Are we together now? He used the formula of signs and wonders. His outstretched arm. That means that there are people following online. There are others sitting and saying, Apostle, how is God going to get my family out of this mess? I know the answer. It will not happen by human deliberations. I tell you that. There will need to be an introduction of the power, the grace of God. And it will happen in such a way and a manner that you will spend your life rejoicing and saying, Thank you. Thank you. Lord, the way you did it is even more than the fact that you did it. He had delivered Daniel. One spectacular manifestation of the wonder-working power of God can bring any family, can bring any individual. Are we together now? Can bring any organization. It does not matter the situation. Look, let me tell you, the Bible says the thing that was, the thing that is, is also the thing that was and the thing that shall be. That there is nothing new under the sun. Everything we are facing, someone had gone through it before. If it's corporate debt, if it's an issue of sickness, someone might be sitting here right now with a medical report. And whilst all of these teachings are going on, you are happy and you are saying amen. But something in you is saying, prepare your house 
for you will die. Let me introduce you to Isaiah 38 that there is a way the lives of men can be prolonged and death can be reversed. This is true. My concern is that people are already beginning to incorporate into their Christian experience the fact that it looks like God is not mighty enough. It's a subtle proposal that is coming from the pain of people and the, the, the plethora of disappointments. I prayed over this, it wasn't answered. Well, I give thanks in the midst of it. I pray over this, it wasn't answered. Well, I give thanks. I pray over this, it is not answered. When you have so many unanswered prayers, it can do something to your conviction. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able, able to do, to keep, In the name of Jesus, he will help us to reintroduce again to the nations of the earth the full counsel of God. The God that still heals. The God that still delivers. The God that can still lift people overnight. It's true that God does not rush people, but God gives speed. Oh. He does, oh, God gives speed. That by this time tomorrow, you can look at your former self and wonder, there is, he does not just do these things. Listen, he does these things to show dominion over time. He also does these things to bring glory to his name. How else will an arrogant creation glorify our God if it happens at the sequence of men? I have released my faith as a person and I've said, Lord, every dimension of possibility that can find expression through me to give you glory, I am available. Every, without restraint whatsoever. If you will take raising the dead, I am available. If you will take healing the sick, I am available. Now, we respect every miracle, but I'm telling you, there are miracles that are still subject to debates and arguments and all kinds of things. There are miracles that the Bible calls notable miracles. When the madman in Gadara was healed, the impact of his transformation, being in his right mind, was so powerful, he single-handedly brought a decapolis. Ten cities. Remember the woman at the well who had an encounter with Jesus. Notice that these people never came back alone. She, she was too grateful. There's no place where Jesus instructed her to go and bring people. This is what happens when people taste of the wonder working power of God. They become too grateful to keep quiet. Do you know what? They don't just tell them God is alive. They draw them to the place where the miracle happened. I believe God. Please stretch your faith shake off the doubt and the fear can God make a way in the wilderness I'm, I'm reintroducing faith to you gentlemen hear me you are not the first to seek establishment do not allow the territory bully you you come in a name there is a name that defies your background there is a name that defies limitations this is the God that we serve I believe him with all my heart and we are going to pray I sense tonight that someone will have to walk out of his church. You, you, you will wave that yesterday goodbye. You will wave those chains goodbye. That you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life. Now listen, you may sit back wondering like you've always done. Can God really make a way? I assure you I know what will happen to you already. We will share the grace and your situation will remain. But for those who will be angry and say, Lord, I plunge into this. We are tired of discussing issues. We are tired of deliberations without result we declare that your wonder working power let it be introduced over this situation then you will see the mighty one arise he says the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous can enter it and they are safe the last one year has been about the most challenging in modern history as we know at least the last 50 60 years and so many people have lost money lost businesses sadly many have lost loved ones 
businesses have packed up even ministries have packed up and people are in a place now that is the exact environment that attracts the wonder working power of god no wonder the lord spoke to his choice servant to name this conference the god of wonders because you see um if you shine light in the day it may be ignored the bible says when you see darkness when you see darkness covering the earth and even gross darkness the people prepare is a signal that you should be ready because your light is about to shine as a result of it verse 3 isaiah 60 says gentiles will come you will no longer look for them gentiles will come to your light and even their arrogant kings like the queen of sheba that they will come to the brightness of your rising There is a dimension of God that we must pray that it is revealed in our lives you're a man and a woman of God here respectfully let me challenge you we must trust God to hold superior dimensions of his powers in these days because people this pandemic pushed people to do a lot of things people have resorted the rate at which people return back to idolatry return back to a lot of things and i'm not talking of idol worshipers i'm talking of sincere people who love god and that is the most human thing to do in the face of such a difficult situation as this so here is a chance again we have ah kali baruski apata a chance once again to introduce the god of wonders to say hey it's creation the creator is still alive he is life himself but we must be able to demonstrate that reality i look forward to times when people become restless because there is no service they loiter around the house of god and say when will that door be open because we have discerned by experience that every time we found ourselves here the mountains it, it looked like there was an invisible hand I, I don't know what happened but while apostle goodhart was preaching to my shock suddenly someone was calling me on a sunday morning come for the job come for the job do they call employees on sunday morning but that's what happens god made it on sunday so that when you are threatened while as a staff there you will remember you will draw from the archives of how you got there listen don't waste your testimonies save them you will need to draw from them oh david when you kill the lion don't forget when you kill the bear don't forget because goliath is coming you will need to draw from the god of wonders and what he did yesterday for your deliverance the Bible frowns at people who forget. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. It's a tendency in men. Mama, don't forget how the twins came. Don't forget that it was five years. They told you you had no fallopian tube. God said, let the doctor finish because there's something I want to do. And when the children came, where they stayed is a mystery and a wonder. And the day your son tells you, will I ever make it? You say, come sit down, let me tell you a story. 30 years ago, I was told I will never have you. You see, this is why many of our mothers have faith. They may not speak in tongues, but there is an archive of the wonder-working power of God. So when they say the child will not rise, mama will go back and say, I may not be educated, I may not be this and that, but there was a song I sang in 1975. I sang and I danced like a mad woman that brought me a miracle. Where is the God that did that yesterday? listen don't waste your testimonies while you celebrate them archive them i assure you the last battle you fought is not the last you will fight in this your life this our walk of faith is a fight god is already ministering to someone we're going to pray why is my soul downcast where is the god that gave you the ministry can he not sustain it have you forgotten his outstretched arm? Have you forgotten how he delivered you from an accident? What is a blood condition that the God of heaven cannot lift you in? Some of you were, were kidnapped, literally, and yet you are out. What in the world makes you think God will allow you to die hungry if his jealousy kept you with no support? The 
wonders of God are an instrument of deliverance. Don't forget this. One of the ways that he delivers us from evil is to stretch his hand motivated by his love and his jealousy and i see that god is going to arise because there, there are certain families that the story the narrative the devil is already creating if god does not show up they will write something and say god is not powerful and for his name's sake he's about to arise and say not so not so uh, you see any when you include god in any equation the calculation changes failure plus god is the answer he gives weakness plus God is the answer he gives who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down and every ocean roll to the king of kings it's a question who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roll to the lord of lords I will praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise Listen, let me tell you something I cried unto the Lord Apostles and I said, Lord, please do not send me with only a message. I don't even have an advantage based on my background. If all I have to give is just a lecture and a message, someone will be angry enough to kill me one day. Jesus was not only sent with a message. Uh -uh. From age 12, he already began to read. But the Bible tells us, that as he came out of the waters it says the heavens were open and the Holy Ghost descended upon him in bodily form as in a dove the Bible says then he was driven to the wilderness and when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights your Bible says he returned in the power and his fame went around it went about. Listen, make up it. There are people who the Lord wants to bring out of situations that only God, only God can take you out of. Please take it high for me, guys. Someone sing for me Nathaniel Bass's song. Once again, may your people see you lifted in my life. Is someone praying bring your business before the Lord bring your family before the Lord bring the issue of concern before your maker turn my life around in the name of Jesus make a statement through my life make a statement through my life in the name of Jesus the Lord to turn your life
a living wonder in the name of Jesus the Bible says for everyone please help that woman to do that answers prayer shall everyone come all flesh come father visit my ministry sign once upon once again upon my ministry let it be clear that I was sent by God sign upon my business oh God sign upon my children arise as the God of wonders that you are please pray please pray don't waste the session don't be silent release my faith for a testimony a demonstration of your wonder working power by your outstretched arm deliver me from financial crisis deliver me from sickness deliver me from the jaws of death it says when you pray say deliver us from evil Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. Let me encourage you respectfully joining faith with your man of God and his wife. Please do not miss the remaining sessions of this conference. Whatever sacrifice you will make, make that sacrifice with your heart opened. Are we together? I really sense in my spirit that there are people that God wants to visit very definitely in this conference. Now, let me say this. I'm about to pray for you. As much as possible, let's, let's honor the COVID rules. There's so much we can, only so much we can do. But then whether you are an usher or not, anyone is under the anointing close to you, please do well. Your brother's keeper, it won't stop you from receiving. Are we together? But there are situations. If there's a way they can bring them and they can arrange them without compromising on COVID rules, that please, because God wants to do something here. Thank you, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift your hands, please. Father, I'm declaring. spirit up upon these 25 people from my left and my right At the count of three, in the name of Jesus, shout that name, Jesus. Jesus, please bring. Shout! 
praise the Lord. Please bring them out. I stretch my hands. Help that gentleman, please. Please, whether or not you are an usher, just let me have them out. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing it come on people's feet. It is it's a mighty deliverance that is coming on people. Please quickly, just, just bring them out very quickly. You call it the God of wonders. That oppressions will stop. Now, I want to pray for... There are people here, you are standing here, but prophetically you are representing families. There are families that God wants to set free now. In the name of Jesus, the hand of God is coming upon you. Families, bring them. I stretch my hands by the God of heaven. Every family here represented inside, outside, following online. Every oppression that stops the praise of God from being heard from your family and your vicinity in the name of Jesus I declare let it be broken now 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 please bring them hallelujah who is David I'm hearing a name David you have a business so that we we, we may not I have to work with that time David I'm hearing a name David who is that David you are an elderly man you're not a young boy is there someone like that oh sir your name is David sir you're in business what do you do sir okay are you a, you're an architect or okay no but you have to do with structures structures this is what I'm seeing so I want to pray for you please don't be embarrassed I'm looking at you ah I'm seeing my house oh you've been to my house I'm seeing you in my house oh dear I'm, I'm sorry I hope you're not embarrassed sir. I want to pray for you Someone will shout now under the anointing, loud to the hearing of everyone. Please bring that person here. There is a strong anointing. So I want to pray for you. What is Agbo? Is this mic working? What is Agbo? Please help us. Apostle, sir, I apologize. I will... What is Agbo? Agbo is the town Sir? Agbo is the town where the governor of Central Bank comes from. Where the governor of Central Bank comes from. There is a miracle that is coming for you from that place. I'm saying it in the open. Pray. Listen, let me tell you this. I know that people have abused the prophetic. Let me, I have to say this disclaimer. People have misused it. But please don't you mix the sacrifice of other innocent people who have spent time praying the price. I think I need to say that because every time we see supernatural things, you see, madam, you are surprised and you are asking, my God, what is this? This man, your wife, you. I'm hearing what you are saying now, madam, this woman. Your, is this your wife? Yes. This woman. She's surprised and I'm hearing her prayer and say, God. I know that this man preaches, but I've not seen that he's in a prophetic dimension like this. And God is saying to speak to you, to know that he's hearing you. And I'm stretching hands on you because that same grace is coming on you now. You will never be the same again. Can I tell you, there are people who fear God sincerely and have paid the price by the Spirit. We have not wasted the grace given to us. I'm saying this with all due respect because sometimes, you know, we just downplay people and think everyone, no, no, this is a ministry with integrity here. Are we together? And so that when you are blessed tomorrow morning when you are coming, as you are seeing this ministration, God is telling you someone who you know would have been here this night. Now it's now up to you to show love, to drag that person and say, suspend this business you have been struggling around. Come and get something that will change your life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Sir, in the name of Jesus, can I pray for you, sir? I stretch my hands. Right now, in the name of Jesus, that anointing comes upon you, that grace for favor. 
right now oppression goes now in the name of Jesus it will never return to you again by the spirit of the living God there is someone here the spirit I don't know if you are in ministry but I'm seeing a strong prophetic grace you are a woman female now in the name of Jesus I'm seeing that unction come on you please I want to bring that person out there is a, a, a real dimension of the prophetic this is a grace that has been following you for a long time and there is a dimension of that prophetic grace bring them out the wailing women God is Pastor Opie, thank God you are here there is a dimension there are wailing women that God is lifting in this place I'm speaking by the spirit of grace here at Roger here at Reha I see in the name of Jesus we release that grace the God of wonders is moving in the midst of his people turning situations around in the name of Jesus Please touch that guy who is near the, the AC. My friend, look at me. The Lord has answered your prayer. Mark the third week of, of March. The third week of March. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, the third week of March will be a strange month of lifting for you. The third week of March. Hallelujah. You were to go to Canada, I think October or November. But something happened, you could not go until now, you have not gone. Who is that person? Oh dear. Oh, wow. We will shout, hallelujah. We will shout, praise the Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm seeing a family here. Truth is, you are a blessed family. But there is a land issue. There is a major, I don't mean one, a major land issue. I don't know if it's that you're having it with um, the, the authorities. Who is that? Because if God does not step in for you, I'm seeing them collect that land, that property. Who is that person? Don't be ashamed where, where people, you are wearing black. You are wearing black like a black, you are a lady. This is, is there someone like that? Oh dear. My dear, you believe in Jesus. Let me speak like the apostles. This is that. Look at me. My dear, shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands towards you. I command favor. Favor that overturns. Favor that overturns. Receive that grace now. Both of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the good hand of God come upon you. This is the woman I'm talking about. Come, madam. You're a member of this church? You came from... Please, Victor, if you're busy, let someone help us do the holding, please. Where's she coming from? I'm a regime member, sir. Please don't come out at random. Make sure... You are, no, I'm saying where you're in, in this city? Yes, I live in Abuja. I live in Abuja. Okay. What's the issue? Because what I'm seeing... Hold on. Where is your husband? I'm seeing you walk and in the spirit, I see you walk alone. And I'm seeing that that land is not even your own. That land belongs to your husband. Whose land is it? It belongs to my late husband. And now they want to take that land away from you. And truly, if I don't pray for you, it's even already finished. They will even take it away. But listen, I'm saying it in the open here. That if God be God, this woman you see standing. A miracle is going to happen this week that will surprise you. You will return back to this hallowed altar and you will testify by the spirit of grace i stand in faith with apostle good heart and we release grace upon you may the god of wonders visit you right now in the mighty name of jesus christ you do jewelries that's your business jewelries who is that person i'm seeing jewelries i want to pray for you we we'll have to close please i am i am challenging you this is more than just the conference of a church. This is a visitation to this city. Please listen to me. Make up your mind that tomorrow morning, tomorrow evening, you see, there's no need running around wasting time in a profitless labor when God can give you an encounter by investing a few hours of quality, dedicated encounter. Are we together now? Please, I, I want you to make a covenant with God this night 
that you're going to draw somebody not just anybody you know people who really need the hand of god why do you go and people defraud you collect money to work out things when you can come and god can give you a visitation i don't say it with any attitude of sarcasm but i'm saying god is giving us an opportunity to be extensions extensions you're a businessman here you are from abia state who is that you are from abia state no, no, no. I, I don't mean you're interested in business. You are actively, you're a businessman. You are from Abia State. You're a tall gentleman. Oh. It's like, is it that he's a worker in this church or something like that? This is what I'm seeing. Who is that? What do you do? Media. Media. I have to pray for you. You used to do well, but something happened. Just went down completely. It's an attack on you. You see that? Um, I'm not going to say everything here, but you see, mercy can speak. Let me just leave it at that. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Sir, please come. What do you do? I don't know why God is visiting business people this night. What do you do, sir? I'm using technology, sir. Ah! I'm seeing there is, God is connecting you with a company a Korean company. Please look at me, sir. You will start doing supplies. I'm seeing you like a, a I don't know if you're a distributor of something of I, technology items. Listen, you see the challenge with many business people is that when they come to church and God helps them, they now look at men of God as if we are out to collect money. No. You see that God puts us to not only prophesy but to back you up. So that whilst you are rising, you remember that you are being protected. The same grace that introduces you to dimensions has been mandated to defend you there. But there is this narrative people sell around that makes it look like men of... Maybe there may be people doing it, but just for you to know that there are people who fear God sincerely. You, you believe what I'm saying? Sir, listen to me. Except God is not God. By September... September, the dimension of wealth that is coming to you. Your prayer now should be grace to be consistent with spiritual things while you rise because money can distract. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release my faith with Apostle Goodheart, and in the name of Jesus, we release grace on you, supernatural grace on you. Ma, I want to pray for you. Are you based here? You're in ministry, ma. I'm seeing a walk in Canada. Oh. This is what I'm seeing. I, I hope I'm not embarrassing you. I'm sincerely sorry. I'm seeing a walk. There is a walk that no, no, no. I'm not saying she should answer. I'm just saying that there is a walk that I'm seeing. So the prayer you have been praying, God has answered it. It's the will of God. It's not, it's not, it's the will of God. There is a dimension of walk. The surprising thing is that I'm praying for this woman, but the person who will fall under the anointing is in the crowd. Bring that person. Because the same thing God is doing in her, God is doing in that person. Just, just allow me to do my crazy things. Few minutes, I'm off your stage. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's someone, a lady, the hand of God will come on you. You see, the thing about the anointing is that once the anointing is living, your hunger can draw it to you, even though it was not an issue that related to you. Praise the Lord. Madam, I pray for you. The woman of God is laying hands on you. I release my faith also. And I declare that every hindrance gives way. In the name of Jesus. You are here with your medical report. Please come with it. This is, I just saw someone in a vision. You are here. You, you have your medical report. Let me just pray. We may not be able to take all the time to pray for the sick. But you are here. You, you brought it with you. Please, I want to just pray quickly for that person so that we'll wrap up. We have to pray. One of, one of the end time weapons of evil destruction, apostles, sir, is cancer. We have to pray and stamp that spirit that is just sweeping across families and the devil is using it to bring a lot of pain are we together now please wait someone here 
you, you, you brought your medical. Who is that person? Please. God does not want us to end this service without a visitation for you. Who is that? I'm seeing a couple here. You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Where are you? you look, look at what the anointing, look at what is happening to her. Look at this. She's not even been prayed for. Look at this. This is the wonder working power of Jesus. Because that report is an evil report. This is a spirit. It's not sickness. It's an oppression. Please, where's that couple? Don't be embarrassed. You will return with the fruit of the womb. It's, it's, it's not a suggestion. You believe what I'm telling you. You see, before you believe a man, you go and find out. Please make sure you are married. Make sure you are married. Make sure you are married. We are Christians, please. Make sure you are married in the name of Jesus Christ. Is someone praying? Pray in the spirit in one minute. No, no, don't kneel, please. If couples trusting God, please come stand here quickly. Let's. If you are here, husband and wife, please still maintain social distance. Be sure that you will come and stand on this hallowed altar and let the world know that here at Riha I see this is the fruit of the manifestation of the God of wonders. All these ones that I've prayed for in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that which you have come desiring. I'm praying for those under the anointing. In the name of Jesus, you go back with several, several deliverances, several miracles. You will stand on this altar and you will testify in the name of Jesus Christ. You can return back to your seat if you can. Those of you standing here, I want to pray for you. I've seen the God of wonders. Work miracles for me, those with gifts and talents spoke prophetically. The mantles of Elijah, Paul and Timothy, I want to see that power. I command that spirit out of her now, in the name of Jesus, out. Out of her now every spirit that is responsible for barrenness of all sorts it must go now please be patient I want to pray for you hold on one of you here is standing for someone not yourself who is that come where is where's the family huh where They are, or oh, your family is at home. You are standing for someone. Your, your daughter. For marriage, for fruit of the womb. Uh -huh, because I'm seeing, what does she have on her throat? She cannot breathe. Surgery? Yes. Huh? You have been booked for surgery. When? April 1st. Yes, I'm seeing that there's supposed to be surgery. You believe in the power of Jesus? What's her name? So we. So we. What does that mean? Come. This is what I call a sign and a wonder. You see, signs and wonders are supernatural manifestations with messages attached to them. Why will God pick out a zoe as a demonstration of the life of God? How old is she? Huh? Three years. You believe in the power of God? You are, you are, you are a member of this church? Where are you from? From this state. I have to pray. Ah! Please don't feel embarrassed. There are at least four or five times I've seen this thing whenever I am preaching. Aleku. Do you know anything about that thing? What is it? It's like something that's. They say my, my cousin.
cousin died two weeks ago. Your cousin died two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. And they said that's what killed him. It was like typhoid. But it was like he was eating his stomach till he died. I have to pray for you because I'm seeing that same thing coming on you. Thank God for a conference like this. My brother, we are not prophets of doom. If God identifies your situation, the reality of redemption speaks over you immediately. Do you understand? We are people of signs and wonders, but we are people of doctrine too. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Out of him now! Wherefore, the Bible says, God had so highly exalted him and given him a name the bible declares and that that name is above every other name sir in the name of jesus we pray for zoe zoe we speak over your life may your name answer for the bible says whatever adam called it that was the name thereof i release my faith with apostle goodheart in the name of jesus and we declare zoe be healed now we bring you the life and the power of this kingdom we so boast about. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed in Jesus' name. My media man, in the name of Jesus Christ, you see, the prophetic has always been the tool of restoration. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none see it restore. I stand releasing my faith with the man of God and we declare, according to the word of the Lord. He said, Master, we have toiled all night, but I speak to you from tonight in the presence of everyone. We give life to your media outfit in the name of Jesus. We give it visibility in the name of Jesus. I prophesied Job 42 and verse 10. The grace that brought back the fortunes of Job because this is what happened to you. I decree and declare, let it come to you right now. Sir, you are standing here for fruit of the womb. But the Lord, what do you do? Huh? I work in the church office. You church office. Yes. I want to pray for you. I just saw a book open over your head and the Lord is saying the book of remembrance is open over you. The Lord is saying for your faithfulness. This is what I'm hearing. You have been a faithful man. I don't know him from anywhere. But in the name of Jesus, the servant of God is laying hands on you and I'm releasing my faith with you. Leave the issue of child first. God wants to... Re to reward you to make a spectacle with your life i stretch my hands in the name of jesus and i decree and declare by the god of all grace that from tonight releasing my faith with apostle goodheart number one may your life change in a way that will marvel and surprise you take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ now for all of you standing here in the name of jesus i agree with you that every plague of darkness according to the time of life listen this thing is a grace it's not something if it's there is there if it's not there it's not there it's as simple as that i stretch my hands and i prophesy according to the time of life in the name that is above all names return with your children return with your children i speak to you prophetically remember not the former things nor consider the things of old for in this season the lord is doing a new thing in the name of jesus christ the lord is doing a new thing the lord is doing a new thing sir i don't know who this man is but i am seeing you running on a horse the lord is shifting you the, the same thing i saw on this man i'm seeing on you to a book is open over you and are you a member of this church sir you see what God is doing I'm, I'm there is there is something God is doing it's like God is is moving to specific people to also show the faithfulness of service the same thing I saw on this man I'm seeing on you can I pray for you sir I stretch my hands upon you in the name of Jesus may grace come on you the grace that makes for speed in the name of Jesus Christ you will run like Elijah you will overtake the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel in the name of Jesus for all of you who are here I decree and declare by the spirit of grace return with your miracle children in the name of Jesus return with your miracle children in the name of Jesus return with your miracle children madam please lift your hands where you are this woman wearing I don't know what color that is is that blue that's lift your hands you are saying Lord please let this service not be over without them calling me I stretch my hands the Lord hears ah, please come please come come
Look at me. You're pregnant. I have to pray for you. Ah. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not tell you there is something in your stomach. They will not tell you that you have something that is growing in your stomach. I rebuke it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it by the... Please don't be afraid. This is God visiting you. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what it is. I stand by the grace of God and I declare that it flushes out of your body right now. Number two. The Lord is restoring your dreams. You used to have dreams. You will see things before they happen. But something happened and everything just left. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the Spirit of God, it is over right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have to wrap up tonight. Lift up your hands. Please make sure that tomorrow you come hungry and you come inviting someone and make sure that you come in the evening again with your heart open. Don't be selfish. Don't come alone. There are spaces I know that we're observing COVID. But there's an overflow that has been made outside. Pay that price and allow God visit you. I stand again releasing my faith with God's servant and his dear wife, Apostle Goodheart. And we speak over everyone whose hand is lifted. In the name of Jesus, tonight, even before tomorrow morning, experience the deliverance of the God of wonders. In the name of Jesus, long-standing issues by the Spirit of God be resolved tonight. Many of you will receive strange calls, miracle calls in the name of Jesus. Supernatural ideas, manifestations of the spirit. Renewals of and an, an reignition of fire and passion for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you with the blessings of heaven. And I pray that your life will not cease to be a compendium of testimonies. Be blessed and remain blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. honor the Lord for just a few moments. Let's honor the Lord. Let's honor the Lord. We're about to close. Just lift those hands wherever you are. Just lift those hands.